And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, formerly of heaven and heaven or hell, and now with its newest expansion, Ascension, the one and only Joel Vrugendhill. Hello. How you doing today, man? Or tonight? I'm doing pretty good, yeah. I've been uh, working on a lot of new stuff, having, having an alright time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been keeping yourself busy with both, with both Ascension and the side project um, Sword or Song. Oh yeah. Um, which, you know, I, I've given, I've, I just, I did a bit of digging into the source material for that. I didn't expect it to be a to be a Roblox fork. I know, right? I. It started off as like a joke with my friends, like, "Oh, you would never do this. This is this is such like a, a dumb idea." And then eventually, like, it, it burrowed like worms into my brain. I, I couldn't stop thinking of like, "I could do it though. It's possible. I have the resources. It, it, it could work out." And now I've done it. Yeah, and you know, to play devil's advocate when it comes to. When it, come, when it comes to those when it comes to those sorts of dumb ideas, Dungeons of the Dragoning was viewed as a dumb idea until people started reading it. Yeah. You know because I think some, I've... somebody thought, "Hey, what? Hey, why don't we why don't we try and mix four or five different RPGs all at once and see and see if we can make it work?" I'm I'm, I'm honestly a bit of like a, a petty guy. When someone tells me something won't be possible in terms of game design, it normally leads to me writing a game. I, and I think this one's uh, turning out pretty well so far. Yeah, I can I can certainly get that. So, of course, of course, there's of course you've also been working on um, on Dawn, which we will pro will probably end up dedicating an episode dedicating an episode of the of this interview series to at a later date. <laughs> yes, that has been a long journey that I'm I'm still I'm still going on. Dawn is uh turning out to be a bit of a forever project right now, but we're getting closer and closer to, to getting something really good out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with the, with that in mind, when it comes to when it comes to Ascension, we we kind of teased it a couple times when we did the um when we did the Samurai Showdown experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, but was were the were these ju were these just ideas that that came to be after you had created Two H, or were or were they ones that you had the idea for but you didn't have it um, nailed down con concretely enough for the core book? A lot of it is like trying to like nail down and really like uh, polish ideas that didn't work out when I was writing Heaven or Hell, like um, the the idea of like stances and like chains of attacks that like go in in like predetermined orders and stuff, and more complex uses of of the systems that I really wanted to try out but never really put the time into because you know it would have been a, a huge dedication for such a big book that I was already working on mm -hmm. so and given that given that I'd like I'd like to spend a bit of time going into the new archetypes that you have because we did again we did tease them last time so it's best to open up with that Yes. So, and of course, of course, it's going to be the same vibe as the, as the first time. the ge The general play style of it, as well as what characters served as inspiration or influence um, of it. And the first one I have in mind is Overlord. Yes, uh, Overlord was. Uh, rather than the alphabetical order of the first book, these are actually an order of development uh, for for all of them. The Overlord was kind of like 
the catalyst for me wanting to make this book, where I started off just, like, uh, on it independently, really wanting to make a classic, like, puppet character within Heaven or Hell, and eventually branched off into more ideas that ended up being the book. Mm -hmm. Uh, Overlord, very inspired by, especially, like, um, anime fighter puppet characters, like... Is Carl his name? Carl Blaze Blue, uh, Zotto, Guilty Gear, and mostly those. I guess like Misfortune from Skullgirls a little bit, uh, but only because it is a puppet character. I'm not sure any specific moves were really uh, inspired by that. Yeah, I su I suppose. <clears throat> I suppose I suppose another I suppose another potential one would pro would probably would probably be would probably be and would probably be Con would probably be um Conqueror in the Naruto games. Yes, actually, I, I was thinking of mentioning that, but but I wasn't going to. But now that you brought it up, yes. Before I did any fighting game stuff, I loved the like the Naruto Storm games, and my my interest in puppet characters definitely comes a bit from. And also the uh, Shippuden guy with the two puppets got the poison and stuff. Um, I get his name. That serves an S. Sasari. I'm not sure. Sasari. Yeah. Okay. I knew it. Uh, yeah. I thought I always. They look so fucking weird. I love those puppets. Well, <laughs> the characters weren't very fun, but yeah. Well, there's a long history of there's a long history of puppet theater in in Japan. In Japan and all, all over the world, but to that, but yes. Japan has its own approach. There's also there, and there's there's also the fact that Conqueror's look is not too far removed from the um, Kurokos, who mm, yeah. they if in Samurai Showdown they were they were the refs in the in the early games, you know, hold, holding the holding the flags. Um, they they were essentially stagehands in Japanese theater. Especially in like, especially in like no theater, which tends to, which tends to have black background so that they blend in. Not so much so in Kabuki because Kabuki is not subtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's where you get the that's where you get the ridiculous face paint. Uh, the Japanese theater stuff is always really fun to look at. It's I don't I don't know too much about it. I'm not uh I'm not too well versed in that. But two, uh, two, I definitely do. I'm interested. The two big styles are kabuki and no, and they are opposites of each other in a lot of ways. Hmm. Kabuki is very loud and bo and boisterous, very very colorful, um, almost analogous to almost analogous to a wrestling match in some cases. And no is very is very subtle, uh, very much on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, that is obviously a vast simplification, but that's the best way for me to put it. But next would be Asura. Yes, Asura, um, largely actually from uh, Asura's Wrath. The that Asura served as a big like visual inspiration for it, and, like, the general vibe with the uh, powering up to get more, uh, like, vestigial arms. Not vestigial, I'm not sure that's the correct word. But more arms, uh, and getting more punch and more, more attacks, just going all out all the time. Sort of, like, I guess this, this is, like, a, a limit test archetype, if you can think of it that way. Uh, trying to see, like, how well I could balance an archetype based around like breaking down the fundamental like limits of attacks per turn made in the system using like conditional power ups and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so next would be partisan. Yes, partisan is um. It sort of developed in a lot of different directions, uh, largely inspired by Rekka characters, like, of course, um, not Martial Law. Who is the Street Fighter Rekka character? I forget his name, but the, the original uh, user of uh, the Rekka, as well as uh, 
a big one being Videl and Android 17 from Dragon Ball, mm-hmm. who are uh, mega characters that I actually uh, play and, and, and know and probably have served as the larger inspiration for it. Has a lot of ways to chain like very basic techniques into each other, but with the weird um, sort of addition of a Suzumo esque permanent buff system that they gain from performing those recos and then going into a sort of like charge special. It's a it's a very strange combination of different things, but yeah, it's meant to give off like the the holy paladin vibe with a big chunky hits and, and prayers that give them bonuses. Mm-hmm. And the Dryad. Oh, also, I don't know but if you if you know this, but I think your mic may be uh, on the fritz. Yeah, Dis- Discord doesn't like me sometimes. Um, I had said the Dryad. Ah, yes, Dryad. Uh, Dryad... (laughs) Mostly a testament from Plus R. Uh, Dryad was... As I was developing the game and getting into the later stages, around the time when I was simultaneously writing both the expansion and, like, the, the final parts of Heaven or Hell, uh, I started integrating lingering markers, which were a way to represent like slow-moving projectiles that could control space uh, rather than just being like a like a gunshot, a, a long-range attack that they were before. And I wanted to see like again, like how can I limit test that? What would a character that's all based around just placing down a bunch of low-value uh, markers be like? And the first thought I had was. Uh, something like Testament, where you place down a bunch of traps and and like minions and markers and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, with the hope, hopefully, um... <laughs> actually, never never mind. I th- I thought I had something, but then it was gone. Um, cherub. Oh. Cherub. Cherub was uh. The, the Marvel, Marvel Flight, uh, also Zamasu in Dragon Ball, but mostly uh, I wanted to get a like Doom or Sentinel esque flight character into the game, uh, with their ability to remain airborne with their special tokens and use it to get movement. They can move back and forth real fast while they're in the air and spend their tokens to do improved attacks and stuff. It's one that I, I think oh. is pretty fun. So Magneto. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody pulls Welcome to Die as part of their combos. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, got the foot dive and everything. It it, it is very much Magneto. <laughs> now, when it comes now, obviously there's a, obviously there's a few new spe- new specialties and talents which. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to go into full detail with with each of those because that'd be a bit. That'd be a bit um, redundant. <laughs> so general strokes here. One of the. So I'd like to shift into something that I talked with you about beforehand, and that is adapting the adapting um, what is present through two H, both through the core material and ascension. Into an into another system. In this case, um, in this case, the Indies ser- the Indies series, the Battlecon series. Yes. Um, for the sake of both of our sanities, I will only be using the core characters from the original War of Indians and its um, remaster. Thank God. Because the remastered. There's not a whole lot of mecha- there's not a whole lot of new characters added in the remaster just just um refining what was there and get and getting some new art. Mm-hmm. And for because if because if we if we did the whole thing <laughs> we'd be here all we'd be here we'd die. all the way we'd to, starve. Well, I'm not going to say we'd starve, but my vo- my voice would certainly starve. Oh yeah. We and we'd be he- we'd be here until until kingdom come 
but handling 18 characters from the from the original, yeah, that's doable. Maybe maybe we'll follow up with with de with devastation or or war or wanderers another day. Huh. Uh, but we'll start starting right off the gate is Cadenza. Cadenza. Okay. 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 Just pulling up. I've got the board here with me. Ah, uh, yes, Cadenza. All right. Uh, yeah. I actually was looking over this one before we started, and I really like them. They're really interesting. They're kind of like um, Cadenza is kind of a very simple character with a very simple gimmick. They just they got a lot of armor. They they have a lot of guard, which lets them take hits and not really care. They have stuff to gain stun immunity on things that normally wouldn't have it. Uh, they just are are going to are going to beat you up. <laughs> They're going to beat you up, and it's hard to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this is one of the. Um, I think the few. This is a very like focused character archetype, but in a way that isn't really reflected in uh, Heaven and Hell supernaturally. I think the main thing, uh, if you wanted to get this sort of gimmick off, would be really leaning into your specialties, and with the specialist talent from uh, Ascension, you can give additional specialties, which are modifiers to your moves. Uh, across the board so long as they all match mm -hmm. and if you want to give everything armored you can slap uh, a bunch of I forget the name of the specialty uh, I know I wrote the game but not exactly as I remember I wrote a lot of specialties but yeah the one that grants you armored and slowed on everything to get that sort of same effect where you can just kind of bash your way through most things so long as you're doing attacks mm -hmm. uh which interesting in Battlecon, it is like it's all attacks, which is cool. It's, it's Battlecon and uh, Heaven Hell are very similar games, but uh, that is one of the big differences is that there are a lot more non-attacking options in Heaven or Hell, which means that doing this sort of like heavy rush down with like fully armored stuff is a lot harder to do. So Cadenza is one of those characters that. Um, if I was asked, I could probably like write a new archetype on them without a ton of overlap. Well, his Cadenza's main thing is have is having the mo having um the most super armor compared to and compared to anybody else in that generation. Oh yeah. I think I think if I, if I was adapting him into have into heaven or hell, that is the main thing I'd focus on is what. What archetypes would get would grant the most potential for super armor, or to be be able mm -hmm. to um, go through with their attacks without getting without the risk of getting stunned? Yes, there is Juggernaut, which has a lot of that, but they lean very heavily on the grappler side of things. Uh, in terms of like a brawler with super armor, of course you want to take some Juggernaut stuff, but you may also want to dip into Bastard, which I think has a few naturally armored options but yeah i think the best option would be like investing your 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 tech your talent to just fully specialize into that aspect of your character no matter what one you choose and that way you could pick some faster and better approaching options which cadenza also has they have a lot of different uh advancing options in their unique styles yep so next would be hikaru soriyama Hikaru, yes. I love Hikaru. There's actually, um, I played some Battlecon a online a while back. I, it's not very active, so I didn't get a lot of games. Uh, but Hikaru was the main character I played. I really liked the, like, flow of this character. And they did actually directly inspire one of Heaven or Hell's talents. Uh, the, I think it's just called Elementalist. The Elementalist talent, um, or Elemental Mastery. The Elemental Mastery talent it attempts, or it's not even, it's none of those things, it's Elemental Mage, I just found it. Uh, it tells you to create that sort of, like, creating uh, elements as you attack to modify your future things. 
Unfortunately, uh, because of how it's originally, it was more like uh, Hikaru, where you would be be able to generate different elements, and they all had like their own effects and combine them and stuff. But it wasn't like effective enough, and also wasn't focused enough for builds to really fit the structure of the game and how you would build characters. So in the current version, you select one element, and um, a lot of your things generate that element, which you can use to modify. But the idea of these elemental tokens that apply like power or armor, or priority or range onto your your moves, I thought was really really cool. And the the way you anteed them in uh, Battlecon, which is not shared in Heaven or Hell, unfortunately, created this great sense of like tension whenever you had the these tokens up. Yeah, he is re- he is referred he's referred to as a geomancer, and um. I in, because of that I ended up making a few Full Metal Alchemist jokes. Doesn't exactly oh, really? doesn't exactly help that both of them are have have a red jacket. A red jacket and blonde hair. But and and give, given how given how this is a game that that wears its weebness on its sleeve, um, wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But as as far as ar- as far as archetypes, there is I can't think of any one that would be fi- would be favored over would be favored over the other. Yeah, the, I feel like Hikari is very much like the the sort of generalist character. Uh, very much like he gives off protagonist energy when it comes to this set. Oh, he, uh, is, and... he is one of the post. He is one. Of, he was the poster boy for the first gen. So yeah. Uh... So yeah, I feel like he sort of fittingly uh, would be taken from a lot of different archetypes. Arch- the, the archetypes, uh, unlike Heaven or Hell, there are universal projectile options in uh, in the, the Battlecon. So you could argue that everyone could take a bit of Battle Witch and stuff like that. But I feel that you know a lot of these characters don't focus as much on those ranged ac- aspects. So the inclusion of it is more so. Plus, complimentary. You, you, I, I don't think Heaven or Hell has a jack of all trades archetype. Mostly because not that, exactly no, yeah. Mostly because that would that would kind of contradict the, um, the way you have the multi archetype approach. Mm-hmm. Building jack of all trades in Heaven or Hell just means taking from different archetypes, uh, which. I'm glad I, I chose to do because yeah, Jack of all trades as an archetype would be difficult to balance at best. Mm-hmm. Uh, so next would be Kalistar. Yes, Kalistar, 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 Kalistar. There we go. Kalistar is sick. I love Kalistar. Uh. I I love self damage archetypes in any game. Uh, Monster Hunter. I had <laughs> my friends fucking hate playing with me Monster Hunter because I just keep choosing the. Lo- I have like a multi self damage set. And it's so terrible, but I love it so much. I love I love uh, Avatar Blyle in in Grand Blue. I love all the self damage stuff, and she is no exception. I love uh, Supernova, one of her... I don't remember the, the terminology for Valakon, one of the ultimates. Uh, um, it's just... Finishers, yes. It is very much a finisher in this case, because at the end of the turn, you just die. It's so fun. I love it. Yeah. But... Um, Yeah, I think she really reflects uh, Flagellant in terms of archetype, as Flagellant is the sort of like self-damaging, aggressive archetype of the game. Um, but with her specific passive, the human form and the elemental form thing, mm-hmm. I like many of the uh, sort of character-altering passives within uh, these games. I think it could be answered with a talent fairly. Not the exact mechanical reflection. There isn't a. Um, there isn't really like a like a damage over time thing to yourself, 
Within Heaven and Hell, you can do like um, lasting wounds to your opponent that do some damage over time stuff, but. Yeah, I... This one's more difficult, definitely. You could do Elemental Mage again, of course, because of the, the fire stuff, if you want to do the flavor, but mechanically, I think it might serve better as a as using the overconfident uh, talent from the, the new book, Ascension, because it sort of allows you to build up uh, power over time by using specific techniques. Uh, so it gives it can give that sort of feeling of the multiple modes that you can go through. Mm -hmm. So next would be Luke von Gott. Luke von Gott. Von Gott. Von Gott. Von Gott. Uh, ah, yes, there they are. This guy is not one I I have played at all. I think when I'm going through, but... Mmm, okay, I see. I see, I see, I see. So, yeah, this, yeah, this, this character, they, have, they are very much like a token-based character in there. Yeah, it's just that his thing. token theme is all about storing up time to, to utilize. Yeah, and they can use it on a lot of their different things. Um... Hmm, I think... They don't have the range to really reflect this, but this might serve well as a um, as a ranger with their with their like bullet tokens. And then, of course, with, the, with some reflavoring, especially since they also provide priority like the bullet tokens. Uh, in terms of at least if you reveal one to two time things, the effect is really interesting because it has different effects uh, depending on how much. Uh, you anteed, unlike the the tokens within Heaven or Hell, all of them are pretty much a static effect. But yeah, that like heavy focus on building up and spending tokens is very much uh, Ranger or Osra. Maybe Osra would be more fitting because Osra does have multiple kinds of tokens that all provide active and passive effects, and that sort of idea of the different like token brackets that they can use. Having those different effects could work, but there definitely is. This is a very unique character that I could definitely see myself like. I probably would. I don't, I don't want to take. Balakon already is such a huge inspiration for the game. I don't want to directly take characters, but this is something that if I converted over would be very unique from other archetypes. Well, both Battlecon and Fantasy Strike all both have a time manipulating character who has who happen to has have blonde hair, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even if Fantasy Strike's version leans a little bit into Guile, though his music does not go with everything. Mm, unfortunately not, no. I don't think many things can stand up to Guile theme. It's a banger. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of, a lot of his stuff a lot of his stuff involve, involves being able to Manipulate his mobility, or st um, or get, or give him, or have it that he's t um, increases to increase his toughness, or even che even cheat the mm -hmm. turn order. Um, I'd I'd say I'd say for the major the majority of his stuff in involves being allowing him to m allowing him to um, move around easily. Oh yeah. But I'd say, as far as as far as the whole time, as far as the whole time thing, I think that it, that would have to be done through tokens. I'm trying to think if there's any talents that would that would help emphasize his mobility, but I can't think of any. I think actually, if you took faint steps, um, it the flavor of it is definitely less so. Isn't isn't related. But uh, their ability to retrace their their steps and do and like retract movement could serve towards that theming, even though it doesn't use tokens itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, let's see, next is Magdalena. Magdalena. Okay. 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 
Uh, there we go, Magdalena. Is this... I played a lot of characters in this set with a friend, uh, so a lot of it, a lot of these characters I will only know from the perspective of their opponent, and I am 90% sure Magdalena is a character that a buddy of mine played a ton. Uh, it's taking a while to load up, but is this the Clash character? Is this one that's all about, uh, and it, like, doing clashes when you normally wouldn't be able to do clashes, or am I, am I crazy? Not really. Her whole thing is having a disadvantage and then and then gradually getting stronger if if she can let if, mm. if she can last she's a long game uh, fighter. Oh yes, 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 yes. I see now. Yeah, I think um Yeah. Again, uh overconfident uh lends to that thing of the stacking power as well as um Osura, uh with their ability to build up the celestial arm tokens and gain a huge power boost once they've gotten their game plan done um with those two together you can create a character that is so extremely different from the beginning of the game to the end of the game uh but i don't know if their actual like game plan and like the ranges they play at and stuff would be very similar that sort of build would be so so aggressive always trying to get on you always trying to get big openers with heavy buttons mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah um because the the approach the approach that she the approach that she has is get is getting tr is getting trans counters and at the at the end of turns if she has enough of those she will um she will level up Mm -hmm. Which, which is go which is going to going to boost her her um, core her core abilities. So that's why I say it's a case of the long game. Her stuff is kind of weak early early on, but at the end of, at the end of a turn, she's going to get a trans counter. Mm -hmm. If you have more than your current level, which you start at level zero, then you level up, and those levels are applied as mod that level is applied as a modifier to a lot of her kit. Yes. That is... It's such interesting. There's so many... The benefit, uh, or I guess, like, the drawback that I took when I decided to make the character archetype base is I feel like I didn't really have the opportunity to create really fucking sick characters like that. Uh, hopefully, you know, Sword and Song will have something like that, but that is just such, like, a, a fun, sort of focused way to do that sort of character. Uh, yeah, I think that that's just... That's one for Battlecon. I, I'm not sure how exactly I I, I could uh, recreate that sort of like gameplay fantasy. Um, I think it would be. F I think instead of put. If if you had tasked me on how on how to do how to do that gradual escalation for for her, mm -hmm. that based based on her, I wouldn't have it limited to one character. I wouldn't have it limited to an archetype. I would have it as a um, gameplay mod. Mm, okay. In other in other words, I would ha I would. Hang on, let me let me open up the sheet just so just so I have my frame of just so I have my frame of reference for what I'm gonna say, so I'm not talking out of my ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, any any more than usual. Not that I'm gonna pull a Jim Carrey or some shit. Oh. But consider. But um, consider how consider how you how you have the hope mechanic. Um, yes. If I were if I were to tackle this, I would ha I would probably have instead of instead of hope being a a uh, it, in s that there would be a a kind of hope level, which one would think would one would think isn't isn't that just level isn't that just the level of a of a super bar in in say alpha or something like that? No, mm -hmm. 
it'd be more of the more of the more of a modifier that at certain hope levels certain extra effects on on actions can happen mm-hmm. that's Pretty interesting yeah there is um yeah sorry continue that's that's the best approach I can think of on how I'd tackle this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There definitely have to be something that's sort of um, all-encompassing in a way. It's uh, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, just like character, I like him. I <laughs> I think I think she's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, next is Vanna Calmore. All right, all right. Who, because of because of the scythe and because of being a pal, being a paladin, um, I ended up thinking of the dervish class in guild in guild wars. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, I think it might be something like that. Sorry, my halo sim is just. Crashing cause it it does not like me trying to load up that specific character. But yeah. That I feel fits the the general vibe, but in terms of like running those the running the same game plan. I'm not super sure. Yeah, uh, this is another one of the characters that I have not played much of at all. Uh, Her big thing is pl- is playing a lot of high low, especially since she has she can put um, a power and priority boost onto an action through divine rush. Uh, okay. As her as her as her primary form of anti, which means she can use it every, which means she's gonna use it every few rounds at most. Um But a lot but a lot of a lot of the design is built around um is built around whether whether the enemy has higher or lower priority than you. I see, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely like um Hmm. This is another sort of like system that I don't. I haven't really like put any focus on. I <laughs> I think it shows that the characters that I haven't played in BattleCon have very little like um similar representation within my own game. It shows how much inspiration I take from BattleCon, but I it's cool. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of, like, if your priority is high, or if your hope is higher, if your hope is lower effects within, uh, game. Ah, uh, hmm. Yeah, there aren't. That would be, it's... Hmm. That sort of, like, focus on, uh... Who is outspeeding? Who is something I haven't really thought about at all. It's almost uh, like seems like the uh, the counter hit, like things like crushing counters or something. Optional rule that I have included somewhere in the book, uh, where it really focuses on the options that your opponent is taking uh, and. Like he getting hits through uh, slower attacks. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, I think a big thing is that there's no guard in Heaven or Hell, so things like the Avenging style uh, don't really work super well. Of course, the big I guess um, one of the things that is reflected very easily is the the scythe. Uh, like base that they have, which of course reflects a lot of the same design as the uh, the scythe 
talent I just added in Ascension where it has increased range, some pull, and stuff built around that. But with the idea of... I think that idea is actually really interesting because it turns a lot of time what is a very, like, binary, better or worse condition into something that, like, puts more, I guess, like decision making into it there are times when you may want to have lower priority or higher when you normally wouldn't care mm -hmm. so it's given given the fact that it's all that it's all about high low i think the best way to translate that would be would be a design that's built around mix-ups mm -hmm. So with that with that in mind, who, what would you say would be some of the ideal um, the ideal ways to 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 emulate a, to emulate a mix up playstyle within within two H? I think uh, the way I, I have done that for the way I've represented that is uh, that they're actually um, in exceed. There is another level ninety nine game. Uh, there are some moves that. Uh, are in it that damage your opponent's resources. Falcon doesn't exactly uh, interact a lot with your opponent's resources in that sense, but I know uh, I think one of Ryu's cards in Exceed makes it so that when an opponent defends against it, they lose out on resources. And for a mix up base to gain uh, like characters and attacks within Heaven or Hell, uh, and especially Sword and Song now. Uh, that sort of same idea is reflected through batter, which is a tag that makes it so that when your opponent defends against you, you are at advantage rather than your opponent most of the time, and leads to like long strings that make you force. I guess a lot more like Street Fighter esque offense, where you're forced to uh, either grapple with being grappled, being grabbed, or being uh struck as there is like as defense is a binary option you have either defending it or you haven't there isn't really like i haven't there's no implementation of like high low blocking or anything or cases where you would have to defend in a specific way as defense is kind of uh poor enough as is Yeah, that sort of like damaging of resources and gaining priority in situations where you normally would then is uh, reflected in in how like mix is portrayed. Yeah, so it's uh, so given that given that um, like when I th when I think of the of just the of just the um, arch just the archetypes, I th the bi the big one that the big one that comes to mind to that would uh, that would be use that would be useful in um in Vanna's approach would probably be um Blade Sage. Blade Sage, yes. Uh reflects a lot of the like sort of medium range options that she has from uh the scythe and her range boosting, reaping and judgment palette. She's got a lot of range boosting things. Definitely fits the medium range sort of archetype of blade sage as tempting as it would be to to, to go with to go with ninja um oh yeah i don't th i that's a little bit too far on on it mm -hmm. um, so next on the next on the list it would be demetrius demetrius who i have demetrius, used demetrius. Qu quite a bit um i can't i can't oh. imagine why <laughs> Oh yes. yes, yes, yes. I love this guy. This uh, design-wise, I've always really liked uh, Demetrius. I think they're a super like fun look, and even though they're kind of simple, I really enjoy the like really good movement you have with them. I've played them a few times, but I can't say they're my most played character from the set. I'll, I'll be sure to mention them when that comes up. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But his, I think, his his approach is well. He's he's obviously channeling, um, 
I know some people would say he's channeling Alucard because vampire, but he's more he's channeling more of Raphael. Mm -hmm. uh, especially since his his whole thing is tr is um trying to build up crescendo by hitting and not getting hit. Yes. And can, and can spend can spend his crescendo to to boost the power of his attacks. Mm hmm. As well, as some unique crescendo interactions with uh, some of their moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I really like this character. Um, I think, weirdly enough, this fits like Osura. I think this might be like a like a dancer Osura or Blade Sage Osura. Due to it being like a to a token focus character that isn't at range, uh, I think Osura feels has filled a lot of that niche that didn't really uh, have something uh, like fitting for it mm -hmm. until it's until the creation of Ascension, as the biggest like token based characters were uh, Ranger, which you know gun character ranged doing a lot of doing a lot of zone in where this character seems a lot more. They have good range options, it looks like, or at least some, especially with uh, Illusionary. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot more based around their movement and uh, getting hits in with high priority and going through guard rather than attacking from a long range to get those crescendo stacks. And I think Osra, even though they're flavored very differently, does fit that uh, gameplay loop of attempting to build up resources in their early turns without getting interrupted and hit so that you can coast through the later turns. Mm -hmm. So, next would be Regicide. Yes. Oh, I love this character. Again, not the most played yet, but this is like, uh... Uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Thinking of the wrong? Nope, yep, I was right. Okay. Uh, Hectech. Or Hecatech? Mm -hmm. Heck attack, there we go. Uh, I This actually um, inspired a lot of specific moves in Heaven or Hell. The dancer's uh, flash step is very much inspired by... Where? Let me, let me find it. Which is the exact one? Or just, just the, the gimmick of shadow step uh, entirely. Uh, the ability to like teleport adjacent to your opponent at will. Mm -hmm. I really like the idea. This is, um... They actually, a lot of the things actually reflected on Ninja and their design since not through the same idea of spending a token to teleport, but the idea that you function best at long range, not because you have long range attacks, but because you have an ability to close distance better than your opponent, mm -hmm. and at higher priority. That is, like, the entirety of the Ninja game plan. They even share, um... I think, where is the move? Yes, okay, the Knives uh, base on Hectech is very much the inspiration for the um, the Tossed Blades uh, technique from Ninja. And even though Ninja, like, thematically is a lot more inspired by Chip and, like, Ninja characters from fighting games, mechanically they, they really reflect uh, Hectech's game plan, if not the specific gimmick of how they manage Shadow Step. Yeah. Well, Chip has always, ha has always had Alpha Blade as his short-range teleport. Oh, yeah. Uh, even if it's one that, if you're not careful, you can overshoot. <laughs> then again, if you're not careful with Chip in general, you can overshoot. But... I'd s so, next would be Hepsba. Hepsba, Hepsba, Hepsba. Where? There we go. Aw, oh, she's fun. I I don't think I've ever played this character, but I've seen I've seen them played. This is one of the more it, I, I I really like the general idea of this one. The uh, packs on how they like 
serve. It's it's good. The this actually, hmm, I'm thinking about it, and this sort of reflects uh, like the same way. Oh my goodness, my brain's going in all sorts of directions, but if sort of giving the same vibe as partisan due to the sort of modular upgrades that they can gain for uh, like large portions of the match in this their case being packs and in the partisans case being their their three blessings uh, that sort of give a standard modification to all of their attacks for the the rest of the game mm-hmm yeah, of course, with um, a lot more, like, of course, Battle Witch, because she's a witch, but also because, you know, the long-range zoner archetype thrown in, it reflects the uh, the specific gimmicks of Partisan, so it would definitely be an interesting, like, combination for uh, Heaven or Hell if you attempted that. Yeah, and, um, of course, the the big th- the big thing with her setup is just is gambling with her life because each each use of packs costs costs one life, so it's best to not miss. And in, uh-huh. in a roundabout way, I lo- I look at Hepspa as as kind of t- taking um, Hikar- Hikaru's ma- mage ante and flipping it on it on its head. Yeah, uh, it's it's very interesting. I really like the character, so especially since um, unlike Hik- unlike Hikaru, there's no real there's no real limit to how many packs you can do. Mm-hmm. The packs are such a good way to like scale power for for a character in this kind of game. But ne- next would be um, Carolyn Ross. Carolyn and Carolyn. Hey. I would get, because of the whole shapeshifter thing. My mind is keep my mind keeps yelling mimic. Mm, yeah. Okay. This character's funny. Yeah. Wacky and goofy. This is actually very similar to the last one we looked at. This is really the the these morphs. Uh, I mean, no, 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 because it's it's one at a time, and they have a lot more significant effects. This is interesting. I do, I do like this character. I think they're cool. I like all the characters, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, but I guess the closest thing would be martial artists, as they um, are the only ones that uh, the only one I know I can think of that is like actually modular, where they switch between a set of of, of traits rather than just having the one game plan. Yeah. Which I, I could I can I could certainly I'm not sure how else I would get that to work, but yeah. The uh this this is very interesting. Very interesting character. I do really like Oh, the the way that the specifically the um the modifiers work with the different morphs is morph bleh, morphs is cool. Mm-hmm. And the way that that it is formatted onto them is sweet. <laughs> I love it. Oh, can't really think of anything else to say, but yeah, I I don't sure um character kind of like has a place 
like that it can fit in into having a hell mechanics is just cool. Yeah, I I do think yeah, I was I was gonna say mimic, but I th I think I was crosswired with a di with a different type of mimic. So the mimic techniques and in um, specialties wouldn't really apply because those are just single um, techniques. Mm -hmm. But moving on from that yeah. is um, Lixis Rancanda. Who... This one might be fucking you over again. <sighs> yes, it is. There we go. I don't know what's up with it today. Uh, it's ha it's having its moments, but I I was saying next is Lixis. Lixis. Even the ones I recognize from gameplay, I'm having such a hard time recognizing the names. Lixis, Lixis, Lixis. She's very, she's very much a debuff. Oh, there we go. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is, uh, actually, uh, this is gonna, <laughs> this is just gonna be a, a constant, I guess, theme with, uh, the, these episodes we do, but the other Heaven or Hell, uh, type property I'm writing actually is something that's perfect for this, uh, <laughs> I can't believe I just wrote an entire archetype based around the application and use of burn as a damage over time effect. Wow. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> and actually, I, I won't have to go too far into that because uh, there was actually an older talent within Heaven to Hell, which is now being ported to that, uh, Denting Blows, that was it's what so it's still one of my favorite types of effects where you apply these negative tokens to your opponent which you know tokens normally oh it's great you can ante them up with your moves and give them stuff it's it's a fun little twist on those sorts of effects and i think this character would very much uh be based around something like that as well unless i'm reading Oh! I thought it was going to be a much more basic effect from just by through reading the virus stuff but looking into it. She's got, she's got discard, she's got mill and stuff, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I don't, oh, that's, oh. unfortunately, not being a card based, wait a minute. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, it's just, can't believe it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sword and Song has an archetype that is based around making your technique dice smaller, which creates the same like option reducing effect as discard in a card game. So yeah, I guess uh, still the <laughs> the uh, the all encompassing fighting game style effects it moves further and further away with every episode. It's always my next project, but yeah. Outside of that, uh, I do think a lot of her, like, movement and, like, pull abilities are cool. I really like pull effects. Scythe Meister, uh, the talent from the new book, um, does a lot of that, like I said before. It's more so based around, like, switching your opponent around to different si sides and, like, almost like the, like the Brawlhalla Scythe moveset, uh... If anyone recognizes that in the audience, uh, effects like that, and I guess like Ruby's uh, cross up dashes and a lot of weird mix up stuff, but that sort of pull effect can be reflected in the same way here, especially since he seems to have a lot more long ranged options with uh, the Scythe Meister extending all of your ranges by one. It, yeah, it works out for that sort of effect. I'd say Hang on a sec. 
I'd say because because a lot of her stuff is 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 all is all about blocking your opponent. Her kit is her kit is all about blocking opponents' um, kits, or bl or blocking off the options that they can take. Mm -hmm. uh, I would. S I'm think I'm actually I'm actually thinking that the ar the archetype that that comes to mind as far as one that would f one that would fit her is actually. As as roundabout as it is, um, bastard. Oh really? I guess yeah. In the terms of um, depleting an opponent's resources and hope as an equivalent to that like discard effect. Mm -hmm. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Let's say ba bastard and some of ba some of battle witch. Yeah, the initial three of bastard, battle witch, and blade sage are very much like compatible with a lot of different kinds of builds as they represent like very fundamental aspects of fighting game archetypes mostly them being the basic close mid and long ranged versions so some combination of those pretty much always uh helps build up a character's uh fighting style the character's like approach to fights in general yeah um so Next on the list would be um, Ryukyuk. Yes. And Ryukyuk. there's there's already t there's already two that immediately come to mind for me. Um, oh really? Okay. First one is Ranger. Oh yes. Is Ryukyuk? Do they have the um? Oh no, this isn't the. And the... this isn't the drugs guy. <clears throat> And the second is um let's see. Let me make sure let me make sure if I get the right one. Actually no, he he would just uh, actually no, I was th I ended up thinking of somebody else. He would just he would just double down into Ranger and um maybe maybe martial art. Maybe martial artist, because his his whole th his whole thing is ha is being able to anti using custom ammo. Yeah, and I imagine they would just go for as many different sources of token generation as possible uh, to serve as those different ammo types. So, of course, ranger being that fundamental part of the game plan and the basic uh, way to get tokens, but also. Bastard at level two can give you uh, unblockable tokens, which can serve as a special kind of ammo. There's a specialty that gives you magnetic tokens that like pull people in that can serve as a special type of ammo. But like just sort of like corralling a bunch of different uh, like token types and using it in your builds, especially because Ranger now has specific abilities that benefit you throwing as many tokens into one move as possible for these big like barrage shots uh would fit pretty well uh mechanically and flavorfully as something to do with that mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is one of the few that's like simple and like has a good fit <laughs> which is which is ironic because he's treat because he's he's listed as flight two so an in, an intermediate level Oh yeah, I mean, Complex is a character, but definitely Complex in the way that I design around naturally and have options to build for for this game. But then there's it. Then there, that brings us to the advanced ones, and the first one is Ch is Cherry Seneca. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Cherry, 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 cherry. And... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it, that, wait, wait, is this the one I'm thinking of? This was probably what you yes, were Yes, this about is the Clash character. Messing with Clash, yeah. This was like the main character that my, my Battlecon buddy played. They love this girl. They're cool. They definitely uh, came up in, in my head a lot uh, when I was designing Heaven or Hell as a character I fought against a lot in Battlecon. I can't say I ever made any like direct uh 
relations to her. I guess you could say Catch the Blade works as it is a way to initiate uh, the sort of Clash-like things, but it's much more fitting and was directly inspired by a character that will be appearing later on. Mm-hmm. Actually, originally, the original version of Catch the Blade, I think, was called uh, Dynamic Clash, which made it so that you didn't have to be at the same hope value to initiate a clash of attacks, and it could you could initiate clashes when you're one above or one below. And it would give you like benefits for clashing. You could do movement afterwards and stuff, but it was just too inconsistent and like RNG based for me to want to include it into the final version. So, mm-hmm. fortunately, a direct connection like that to Cherry is no longer in it. But the, I guess the like other forms of, I guess like in in terms of the flavor of it and the other forms of like gameplay that they built around in terms of like their teleports and their and their the way they actually interact with the game um very much reflects illusionist uh, in a lot of ways even though it doesn't have the the focus on her main gimmick being the clashes mm-hmm. yeah i think something like that yeah so i'd s- Given her, given her setup, um, my mind is actually going towards um, illusionist. Yes, yes. Uh, as far as the as far as the archetype. Hmm. I don't think it'd be a perfect match, but I think it'd be closer than anything else, pretty much. Yeah, whenever whenever you're doing these kind of adaptations, you're never going to get a perfect um, one to one. You have to go with a close enough that you're mi- you're mixing between the actual mechanics, the lore, the intent, and an educated guess. Hmm. If I could get an exact connection for all of these, I I, I would be plagiarized. <laughs> uh. Remember, if you steal from one, it's it's plagiarism. If you steal from many, it's research. It's true. Oh. That's just called being an artist. Yeah. But next would be Kadath and Dryad. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. Is, it, his whole his whole thing is is about is about setting traps on on the field. Dryad is your trap boy. Yep. <laughs> This is this is this is a space dryad for sure. Yeah, they even have the effects of like you might want to put some battle witch in there too because they have some other stuff. But this is mostly just dryad. There are even effects on dryad that are like can move the the, tra- the traps towards the opponent, move the opponents towards the traps, uh, set a traps on the opponent's space after hitting a grab. There's just yeah, you 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 got the gates. <laughs> this is what, this is what's happening. This this is a this is a dryad player mm-hmm. for sure. The way that you the end game you have for those is very different uh, due to the single gate being sort of almost, almost like a puppet, like Overlord that um, you move around a lot and like use for repeated strong effects. Um, rather the dryad setting down like forty traps and just like making your opponent cry at, at every uh, possible opportunity. Um, so maybe you could argue, like, Overlord or, like, Battle Witch might work a bit better, or a combination of, of multiple of those things. Yeah. But in terms of, like, the the focus on traps, I think this is mostly Dryad. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, especially, especially since a lot of his kit is is about not, ju- not just the placement of the trap, but also where himself and the opponent are relative to that trap. Because uh-huh. there's some where if he if he's standing on his on his own trap he can't get hit and and some where um if the trap is between himself and the opponent then the then he can't get hit. Actually in a lot of ways that is more like a uh, illusionist. There's definitely a few ways you could go about it. It depends on what you want to focus on really because uh the gate is a very uh, like malleable resource yeah, in this I w- character's case. I would say I would say illusionist more than battle witch because 
Yes. Battle Witch is the is the keep away magical Daka. Yeah. And that's not that's not really his thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for him, it's it's more about man, it's more about battlefield manipulation rather than um, rather than playing keep away. Yeah, which is pretty much fitting for both Illusionist and Dryad. Mm -hmm. So next is Sagas. Sagas. Uh, uh, yes, Sagas. I think Sagas is uh, my second most played character. Uh, in this set. And I love Solmir. I think it's such a funny move. It's my favorite finisher. Maybe no. There's one finisher I like more. When we get to the character that I that I have played most, I will I will gush about them, but this character is also really cool. Yeah, I would s I think s given the yep. Sagas' whole th his whole thing is playing um is playing doppelganger with with opponents. Mm -hmm. I think they might be an overlord. Because like um the one talking about before, uh this is a character very focused on like moving around and really caring about the position of a single marker. Uh, which is very much what Overlord does. Technically, if you want to be a nerd, Overlord creates five markers and they all move at the same time and it's a pleading resource, but I don't fucking care. I wrote the game, I can tell you you're a nerd for saying that. Um, it's, it's, it's supposed to be one, like, puppet that you move around and has a lot of interactions with your own kit, and I think that sort of way to, to use a marker very much fits what this character is doing. Oh, I would personally. I would. I would say. Um, I would say probably. Probably a probably illusionist and um, overlord. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> these two characters back to back are very uh, very similar cases. Um, the way they use those markers is very different, but they both are about the manipulation of a single marker. And I know in a later set there is a character that literally has a copy of themselves, which is much more of an Overlord. Mm -hmm. I was the old, the old design of Overlord, the original version, was actually directly inspired by that character. But that's for another, that's for another day. Yeah. Um, so next would be Seth. Seth is my favorite character. I love this guy. He's the best. Uh, I love Seth's gimmick. Seth's gimmick is, I just copied it. That that is that is catch the blade. Uh, I love foresight so much. Um, I think it's such a cool. I think, it, it, like, it was one of the design things like opened my eyes to like how you can do um, like ludo narrative in in tabletop games. And Foresight is just such a good way to, like, make a, like, all-knowing, like, timekeeper character work in a player-versus-player game. And the... A lot of... A lot of his... A lot of his kit involves... Involves name... Involves, um... Naming a particular... A particular card or, or the like, and if they're and getting advantage if that card is being used. Yes. And also, reading fate is the best finisher in this game. It's so funny. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, I do like that that the alternate art is basically turns. <laughs> Seth into a common writer XP. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Oh. Complete with the fact that his unique his unique is re is retitled Justice Kick. <laughs> but it's really good. As far as far as that sort of get that sort of guessing game, aside from Catch the Blade. Um, that's that's where things get that's where things get a bit tricky. Yeah. Um, 
I'm thinking. I'm thinking probably, uh, probably Blade Sage. I think Blade Sage in a lot of ways. I was thinking that especially with Perfect Parry, as the ability to call out like a specific option really sort of fits that uh, that fantasy. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other Blade Sage options, I'm not sure, are super fitting because this uh, is a character who is pretty close ranged. They only have one uh, range increasing option. It's not even like a a O one increase. It's a one increase. Yeah. Um. So I think it's something like. Like one level of blade sage for the the better movement and perfect parry, and then maybe like dancer for uh like their movement and stuff and ability to do close range stuff that isn't like super like oppressive mixy like it is on uh, on bastard. Mm -hmm. Um. So next would be Tatsumi. And I think this this is an o this is an overlord through and through with her with her little oh, yeah. panda. The little panda is an overlord minion. That's just how it is. Juno, Juno is an Eddie. Uh, we love Juno in this house. Mm. Uh, am I right in thinking? Well, it's not Juno. It's Judo. Yeah. Yeah, the moving around that uh, they they do this actually does like has affected a lot of how I've designed um, these sort of like puppet marker manipulation characters uh, and like abilities in the game very much just Overlord inarguably unlike the other ones which are like oh it's Overlord Lucian it's Overlord Dryad or something uh, this is just an Overlord character yeah. Oh, and the le the last and which happens to be one happens to be one I am fond of mm. is um, Zamasol Cat. Yes. I have not seen like anything to do with this character. It's like uh... Zamasol's a stance dancer, so martial uh... artist. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this is this seems like uh, oh, so many stances. This is definitely seems like a martial artist character. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Zamasol was the first was the first character I played as when I first got um BattleCon. Hmm. Oh, nice. But. This is this is a very like complex character. Mm. Seems very interesting. But the the idea the idea with him is that you're co you're constantly you're constantly changing between hit between his um between his five different five different paradigms, five different stats. Oh, yeah. That sort of... You could probably, if you wanted to fully embrace the like as many stances as possible, you could go martial artist and throw in some uh, two levels of, of partisan to get the modular buffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But these sorts of... I talked about it before with the morph character, these sorts of, um, like many stances characters don't have a very good direct translation for having around. Yeah, the of course the of course the other thing is that you can't you can't just pick your your para, your paradigm with a lot with a lot of the bases that Zamasol has. Um, yes. you move you move straight into it. It can it kinda reminds me of 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 say Siegfried in Soul Calibur, in the f in the fact that mm, some of his mm -hmm. combos directly move you into certain stances, which, yes. if you know what you're doing, um, you can you can you can chain you can chain the different moves in from those stances easily. But if you don't, it you're gonna have a moment of vulnerability trying to reset yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think Leifei also Leifei and um Virtual Fighter also had this thing also had this thing. Where just a, where a lot of yeah. 
a lot of the mastery with him was figuring out what moves would what moves would proc into certain stances. Which I think is the reason why I think that's the big reason why, unlike some other stance dancers, Zamasal is considered an advanced type of character. Yeah. It definitely seems like a much harder thing to manage. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to do <laughs> every time I write related to Heaven or Hell, it, it's just another it, it's all it's all it's all a mirage. It's all like guys. I'm really just trying to develop stances in a better way. <laughs> Stances as a mechanic are something that I've been trying to perfect for a long time now. Mm -hmm. Which is un which is understand understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, I will. I will admit that in um de in devastate in devastation the. The one design, the one design that stuck out to me the most as, <laughs> as one that as one that I'd have to take some notes from was Elagor, if only because you have this mix of, of elements between a between a knight's armor and a sh and a um, Shaolin monk. Mm -hmm. It's fun stuff. Yeah, but. Obvious, obviously, the reason I keep the reason I keep doing these little these little character experiments is just to explore how far the concept can be stretched, and yeah. even more so with Ascension. And it sounds like, despite how hard we tried to avoid it, there's there's yet ag there's yet again <laughs> another another <laughs> case where an expansion you're working on that you can't talk about here is gonna is going to be is going to be applicable. Yeah, I, I can't imagine I'm going to be working on Heaven and Hell for too much longer, but um, it is it is my pet project for now, and I'm always trying to expand on what you can... the types of things that you can make in that game. Yeah. And obviously we dipped into some of the other stuff you had been working on, but um, I, don't, I don't foresee me doing a whole interview dedicated just to, say, the Star and City card game or... Um, well, Star and City might get its might get its own time in the spotlight down the road, but some but um, Dawn is definitely something I could I could see spending I could see spending an extended yes. amount of time with. Dawn is a very big game that definitely could uh could get enough discussion in for a full video. I think mm -hmm. as like as much as I would have liked to ju to just focus on what's in Ascension alone, the problem is it's only sixteen pages long. <laughs> of course, yeah, it's a very small little package of stuff. It's a small, it's a small package just with, just with a large amount of implications. Mm -hmm. But because of how small that package is, it's not, ex it's not exactly something that works in a, in in my usual interview style. Mm -hmm. Well, thankfully, mm -hmm. <laughs> with Dodd, you'll have, uh, you'll be able to go back to something that's closer. Yeah. Uh, but with that with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule once again to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. No problem. I'm a greedy guy. I like talking about my stuff. So the honor is all mine. Mm -hmm. and or the thanks is all mine, I guess. Anytime, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Of course, of course, of course. Thank you. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>